If we run out of bullets, baby, they're gonna wish we had. All right, guys, we're down in central London today with Doug Lombardi, who's the VP of Marketing for Valve, and we're very privileged to be looking at Left 4 Dead 2. Now, we're, we're underground with zombies running around. Doug, what's going on? <laughs> Just, you know, having a good time here in the dungeon in, uh, over by London Bridge. Very good. So, so tell us about uh, Left 4 Dead 2. Obviously, our first look at, look at E3, and now a few, a few weeks later, we're getting to see some more content. Can you tell us about what, uh, what you're showing today? So today, we're sort of looking at the, the latter part of uh, the New Orleans campaign that we've dubbed The Parish. Um, taking a look at uh, the finale across the bridge uh, and just sort of introducing people to more of the space and, and giving them a more of a sense of the New Orleans campaign itself. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the questions we've had kind of post E3 is, you know, why not do, do this as DLC? What's, why do it as a complete new game? And what can you offer it in terms of a you know, complete package? Well, I think that when folks see everything that's in store for Left 4 Dead 2, they'll notice that it's a massive offering. Um, you know, five campaigns versus four, everything playable in versus and survival mode out of the box, plus a fourth yet undescribed multiplayer, unrevealed multiplayer mode. Over 10 new items, 10 of which are, are melee weapons, new survivors with all new dialogue, new technology in the AI director, new technology in um, uh, the animation system and the graphics, and a number of zombies we're getting on screen. And you know, the way we make decisions at Valve, you know, we're very fortunate, we've had great success, uh, and we're not publicly held and we don't have any, you know, requirement to ship a game in time for Christmas or we don't have quarterly deadlines or anything like that. Um, and Gabe doesn't run the company like that. He's like, let's make what's what we think is cool, what we think customers will be cool, and then we'll figure out the best way to get that out to customers. And you know, when we did the whiteboard exercise after Left 4 Dead, we wanted to keep supporting the game you know, post-launch, which is part of our history, and we also had a bunch of ideas that felt like they might be a sequel, which was a lot of the things I just described. And I think that by announcing the game at E3, which is where people go to announce their big new products, uh, it was inadvertently or mistakenly taken as we were dropping support for Left 4 Dead 1, and that's just not the case. We're actually about to make an announcement of what's next for Left 4 Dead 1, which will be coming before Left 4 Dead 2. And hopefully once people see everything that's in, in store for Left 4 Dead 1 in terms of ongoing support and everything that's coming in Left 4 Dead 2, they'll see that, oh, there was a method to their madness and they weren't being capitalistic geezers. I, uh, I just had a chance to play it and I got some of the new uh, melee, melee weapons. I actually picked up the frying pan and then proceeded to die straight afterwards. Oh, no. so, so tell us how that works. <laughs> well, the frying pan is, is honestly my favorite new thing in the game. Um, and as I've been traveling around since E3 showing the game, the frying pan never fails to get a great reaction, primarily a laugh from people that play the game. Um, the melee weapon system in general is sort of the number one thing that the team had in mind coming off of the first game to put in the chainsaw, the fire axe, the frying pan came a little bit later, but the axe and the chainsaw were immediately put on the whiteboard when we started talking about what to do next. And it really offers people a chance to play the game a little bit differently. You actually probably can make it through most of the game just being the melee guy. It also has really great gameplay implications. You know, if you get boomered and your vision's impaired and you're getting swarmed by zombies, having a machine gun when friendly fire is turned on isn't necessarily the best choice. So there's, there's some great gameplay implications about it in addition to just being sort of fun and over the top and another way to play the game. So uh, in, the, in the kind of tradition of the last game and the Valve tradition, I, I assume there's going to be an achievement for making it through the game as the, as the melee guy. <laughs> well, there's definitely going to be one related to the frying pan. What about the, uh, the, the axe as well? Because you, uh, with the demo that we're seeing here, you can use the axe. You kind of, uh, it gets lodged in zombies as mm -hmm. well. Tell us how that's going to work. Is that going to be a problem if you're using it a lot? Uh, no, I mean, <laughs> it's not a problem for me. I mean, what it is is just giving you great response to that individual melee weapon, and we want to make sure that each one of them has a different feel, has a different ability. The axe, for example, can take certain boss monsters out with a single hit. Um, Obviously, there's a danger that comes with getting that close to the boss monster, so there's a trade-off between you know, how much of a badass you think you are and how much of a badass you actually are. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, some of the enemies. The, ones that I, the, the new one that I encountered was the Charger, mm -hmm. which lifts you up and pam like, kind of pummels you to the ground. Yeah. We're going to see, tell us a bit about the Charger and some of maybe the, the new enemies that we're going to see. So the Charger is the first one that we've revealed. There'll be at least three new boss monsters in the game. Uh, we're toying with a fourth that may or may not make it at initial, at initial launch of Left 4 Dead 2. Um, and in addition to that, there's new common zombies 
zombies, uh, some of which will be specific to each of the campaigns. So the hazard map guy uh, is specific to the New Orleans campaign, who we're also showing here. Back to the Charger, he was designed really uh, to uh, respond to players who were backing up against the walls in the finales and in the big moments of the yeah. game. And so he's got basically one arm that is like this giant whip. So one of his attacks is to sort of smack you off the wall, you know, which also helps separate the group, which was one of the goals of the smoker, was to, you know, as you know, if you've played the game, if everybody's together and playing as a unit, chances of survival are pretty good. Once you get separated, chances go down pretty dramatically. So the Charger, in a similar but very different fashion, is there to separate people, to keep people off the wall. And then I guess one of the animators or designers thought it would be fun if he could just pick you up and pound your head into the pavement too. So that was sort of like a bonus item on top of the, the original design goal for him. So what, all the things, all the environments we've seen so far, I think with New Orleans you were saying, mm -hmm. what other environments can we expect from, from, from the finished game and when can we get to see them actually in action? Yeah, so we're going to be at Comic-Con next. Uh, I think it's the third week of July in San Diego. And then we'll be at PAX and we'll be at a few other shows uh, back over here in Europe, I think, in the fall. Um, uh, for uh, the one in Nordic and, and perhaps yeah. one or two others. Um, so, uh, you know, our plan is at each one of those to bring something new. Uh, so today we brought some more of the New Orleans campaign. Um, at Comic-Con, for example, we may bring the Swamp campaign and then pack something different. One thing that's important to note is that the New Orleans campaign is set in daylight, but the entire game is not set in daylight. I think that's one of the things folks took away as a bit of a confusion from E3. The Swamp, for example, which I believe is going to be the reveal at Comic-Con, is a nighttime mission. And as I mentioned during the preamble here today, we're playing with fog in that mission to reduce visibility for players that are mowing through it pretty quickly and acting as a, a well-oiled machine. Um, for, I mean, our predictions for E3 Three. We're, all of us were, were hoping for Half-Life Episode 3. Yep. Can you tell us anything about that at all? <laughs> Freeman is not finished. That's all I can say for now. Stay tuned. Doug, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate that. And I know you've got to get back to, to see your family. It's a busy, <laughs> busy schedule. You can read more about uh, Left 4 Dead 2 on GameSpot.com. We'll have a full hands-on preview for you shortly.